There is one very large scale question that I'm primarily interested in, that is how do we build automated systems that can learn where all proteins are located within all cell types under all conditions? Uh, this is a fundamental question about how cells are organized and we work on many different aspects of that problem, but that's the fundamental problem that everything is tied into using cell biological methods, using computational methods, especially machine learning methods. Projects within our group that uh, biological science and students have worked on in the past and might work on in the future relate to the process by which we decide what uh, uh, protein patterns to image, when to image them, how, how we should perturb them, what biological systems we should use to study that. For example, uh, I have a current project uh, which involves looking at changes in protein location during uh, differentiation of cells. And so uh, biology students um, would typically work on the aspects of setting up the experimental system to be studied and then uh, uh, figuring out what uh, approach should be used for tagging proteins, visualizing proteins, uh, and then what uh, helping to design the imaging protocol that's used and executing that and then participating as well with the computational people in the group uh, for the analysis of the results from those kinds of experiments. So we use, within our research, a lot of uh, microscopy, obviously, because especially fluorescence microscopy, because it's a pr predominant uh, method for learning where proteins are located within cells. Um, we use a lot of tissue culture in order to prepare samples for microscopy. Um, we also use um, a lot of robotics for preparing plates of cells for doing experiments, for adding reagents to plates, uh, and also for doing sequencing of tag genes within cell lines. Uh, we use robots to do the DNA preparation and do the um, uh, ligation of the um, tag DNA uh, and, and preparation for eventual sequencing. Um, on, the, on the computational side, we use a lot of machine learning methods and we use especially what's called, what are called active learning methods, which are methods that are designed to try to decide what the best next experiment to do is based on what you've done uh, previously. So I have right now uh, about eight grad students uh, three of whom are graduating this year, four actually are graduating this year, and uh, three postdocs, uh, and uh, two programmers, and about nine undergraduates. One of the mo uh, um, sort of high impact recent papers we published was in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, Sciences on a method for estimating how much of a given protein is present in each of the different subcellular organelles. This is what we refer to as pattern unmixing. So when we see an image of a cell, there may be some protein that's contained within the Golgi, some protein in the ER, some protein in the lysosomes or the nucleus or the mitochondria. And what the system that we described was to be able to estimate how much of that protein was in each of the different compartments. So that had the most important impact of that was actually for biologists to be able to use to analyze images in order to make to estimate these fractions. And a journal like PNAS is a very broad, uh, broad uh, access journal, and so we've you know, published it there. Um, we've had papers in the Journal of Machine Learning Research that talk about basic machine learning problems that we uh, that have arisen in our work and that um, that we've addressed. Um, I would say the most, uh, the largest fraction of our work is published in, in the computational biology and bioinformatics literature um, because that literature deals with the computational methods and the results from those methods um, that are uh, being applied in biology. Um, but you know, we also uh, uh, publish extensively in the cell biology literature too. I have a lot of collaborations. I've been very fortunate to be at Carnegie Mellon, which is such a great collaborative institution. 
I have collaborations with John Jarvik and Peter Bergen in biology on this CD tagging project, this RANTAG project, where we're randomly tagging many, many different um, gene, uh, proteins uh, within a single cell type. I have collaborations uh, with uh, Gustavo Rode, uh, who is in uh, biomedical engineering in the Center for Bioimage Informatics, on the building of these generative models of subcellular patterns. Collaboration with Chris Langmead, who's in the computer science department and in the Lane Center of Computational Biology that I had, uh, on the active learning methods for trying to discover the, the, the dependencies of proteins um, upon the addition of various drugs. Collaboration with Zibbar Joseph on learning the pathways by which proteins are sorted uh, to their final destination in terms of carriers that they might interact with or motifs that they express that take them to their destinations. Uh, collaborations with uh, Ziv Bar Joseph and um, uh, William Cohen uh, in the past on building uh, systems for automatically learning the information within journal articles that relates to the location of proteins. And those are just a, a few. So we really uh, collaborate with a lot of people. My recent PhD students are currently in postdoctoral positions uh, one is at the University in Baylor um, College of Medicine. Um, one was at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute as a postdoc and is now a professor in China. Um, another recent graduate is working for uh, a, a drug company doing uh, screening of different drugs using automated microscopy. Um, the, one of my students who's about to graduate um, has a postdoc lined up uh, in uh, uh, in San Diego, uh, another postdoc, another student about to graduate has a um, position with a startup company that's centered out of Duke, um, in applying some of the machine learning methods and machine vision methods that we're working with here uh, to analysis of, uh, of, of plant uh, uh, changes and plant responses to different chemicals. Um, students that are farther along that uh, finished their postdocs uh, I have a student that is a professor now at uh, Johns Hopkins, a student who's a professor at the University of Nevada, um, a student who's a professor over at the University of Pittsburgh. So, um, you know, the students have gone a range of different places. Probably the most important thing for students who are interested in moving into this intersection between cell and molecular biology and uh, in computer science and machine learning is uh, becoming familiar with the statistical and um, mathematical underpinnings behind areas like machine learning. Um, many of the students that I have had, especially students from biology, um, have started out with knowing almost no computer science but have uh, at least brought themselves up to a basic level within statistics and then Learn the the statistic, learning the stati the more advanced statistical principles that are involved in machine learning, um, enables them to use tools that have been de developed by others in order to be able to uh, to apply them to their particular problem. Carnegie Mellon has an interdisciplinary, interactive environment that is like no other that I've experienced, and I've traveled all over the world. Uh, the the university here uh, is very strongly committed and all of the people within the university are committed to the notion that um, achieving research goals and, and uh, should not be hindered by departmental boundaries, college boundaries, boundaries between groups and so this environment is just absolutely fantastic from that perspective. Um, the large number of collaborations that my group has is, a, is just an illustration of that. You know, when you're trying to solve a problem here, you try to identify the people that have the expertise that can help uh, address that problem, and uh, there are, aren't any barriers to, to, to getting those uh, to getting that accomplished.